All right, we are back on Radio Row with the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge, Mr. Controversy, my man D Intellectual. What up, what up, what up? We have two special guests. We have former NFL linebacker Dahani Jones and also my man Antron Juice Williams. I had to say it like that when you say Juice. Oh, that's right, that's um, right. <laughs> first of all, how are you all doing today? We blessed, man. Good, good. Now, I really want you to talk about um, this a situation you went through, you mm-hmm. had a major brain hemorrhage, and it yes. nearly took your life. Yes, um, eight years ago, um, I had a hemorrhage, brain hemorrhage stroke that had me in a coma for 10 days in the hospital for two months with a 50-50 chance of living. Um, I'm here by the grace of God. Um, I'm so happy to be here and be a part of Special Olympics. Fast forward it, now I'm a Special Olympic athlete. It's dope. Even with that being said, uh, let's talk about some of the things you do with the Special Olympics. You know, you you, you, you were on one side, but now you're on the other side. And yes. How, how important is that to you and your involvement with that? Um, Special Olympics mean everything to me because, you know, by me, by me being one way with not being disabled, um, I could be an advocate because I understand and now with people that will have intellectual disabilities like myself um, I could definitely coincide with the things that they go through on an everyday basis but when you have an organization like Special Olympics they they are like they're just like family and I'm just so glad to be a part of this organization now I see that um, in 2022 Orlando is hosting the Special Olympics mm-hmm. And yeah. where could everyone go and get that information? They can go to specialolympic.org. Okay. Now, Dahani, you played in the NFL, and I'm pretty sure you know a lot of players that dealt with significant, um, whether it was injuries or things like this. What do you do? Because, yes, it hadn't happened to you, but how do you help and how do you keep this message going? Well, I think um, by being here today, um, speaks volumes not only myself but other people other players other advocates of the Special Olympics um, the great organization that it is and the supporters like the Galasimo uh, Galasano Foundation which supports around health and health and wellness all are a part of sort of a comprehensive 360 sort of approach much like Special Olympics is that year-long um, movement day in and day out. You know, there's over a hundred thousand different sports competitions. You already talked about mm-hmm. the Special Olympics USA Games, which is happening in 2022 in Orlando. There's going to be 4,000 athletes, 10,000 volunteers, um, 1,500 coaches. There's there's a lot of people that are affected um, in a lot of different ways. And I think what's so powerful about the Special Olympics is that you know where sports really has the ability to kind of change the world we have an ability to be advocates in order to allow that change to continue and so now that's what I want to be a part of and why I want to be a part of it because I'm affected in, in, in just the same ways as everybody else absolutely so you had a show right where you were yeah, I was I, I was able to travel around the world and I you know I, I'll let Juice talk about his time in Israel but you know being able to see the world that also changed your perspective too Absolutely. T- talk, talk about sometimes you you in, you in Israel, Juice. Um, it was great. It was a great experience. Um, but it's nothing like the United States. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I was ready. I was homesick. I was ready to come back home. And um, yeah, it's it's always good to be right here. Even though no, I won't get too political because right, I know right. it's, it's kind of a touchy subject. But yeah, it's it's good to be. In Miami, Florida, enjoying this weather. <laughs> this is nice, isn't it? Yes, because I'm coming from Ohio, and I don't even want to go back home because it's cold right now. <laughs> what about what about uh, what about our people from Ohio? We actually yeah. uh, accurate. He said the same thing. He like he might have to change his name. What do you say, Chico? Chico, you know, yeah. Name Chico and stay down here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, Dahani, you played 11 years in the league. You played for the Philadelphia Eagles. For um, Andy Reid, how how is it to see, and how cool is it to see him now at the Super Bowl with a great chance, another chance to get a chip? 
Yeah, no, I think it's great. I mean, it's not only just Andy Reid or Big Red or the big guy. I mean, there's so many different nicknames right. we have for him. Right. Uh, but it's also Steve Spagnuolo, who was a part of that same team that was a part of the 2005 run at the um, at the Super Bowl against the Patriots, where we lost by three um, in, down in Jacksonville, or up in Jacksonville, really, right? So hopefully the, the southern... Uh, most part of, of Florida will provide an opportunity for him to get a ring so he can go home. And as I keep telling people, he just wants to eat that bowl of ice cream, man. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking forward to seeing the game. How does rugby compare to football? Uh, rugby is nothing like football. People can talk all they want. Look, you know, people can say, oh, I'm, I'm a rugger. It's it's tougher than football. Man, you don't know nothing. Okay? <laughs> I've done both sports. In, in rugby, you don't hit people. You sort of you glance off people and right that's um, completely different than football where it's full contact in your face now we'll say the Seahawks enacted rugby like training so that they could be less impacted by the hits Mm -hmm. so there's evidence right there right but it's a different type of game now and there's a lot of rules that are being put in place rightfully so in order to protect the players but let's just be clear football and rugby are two completely different sports (laughs) <laughs> all right, we, we got to let you all go. I know you all have a busy schedule. Last question. Juice, you play ball, basketball. Yes. You're a hooper. With this um, unfortunate situation with Kobe Bryant, can you talk about a favorite memory you have as far as watching him play or any anything from his career? I mean, he, this that man, he was such, I would call him a GOAT because... He inspired me growing up with Kobe. You just know his relentless just was un just un, was undeniable of what he done for the NBA. But my favorite um, championship is his third championship. Mm. And uh, again, he will be missed. And condolences goes out to the Bryant family and the, the seven other families that lost their loved ones. And uh, my, it's a touchy subject because I have two daughters on my own, right. and I have I, I have three. So really, yeah. So um, yeah, that's what I have to say on that matter. Rest in peace, um, Kobe Bryant. The rest of the ones lost their life. Yes, sir. All right, there you have it. The Honey Jones, Antron Juice Williams. Keep it here. We're gonna have more interviews coming up shortly.